Hey folks, it is Cal, and I'm here to do a short video on replacing the shock absorbers, front shock absorbers, on a NH, NJ, whatever, 1990s Pajero, replacing these heaps of crap with some more cheap crap. I'm sure if uh, anyone watching this video is going to tell me that Commando are terrible, this is an old car. I don't really care, as long as it replaces the old ones. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. Obviously, step one is remove the wheel nuts. 21mm, I'm using a decent air gun, but whatever you've got, you can use. Uh, actually, yeah, jack it up first, to be fair. Um, you're gonna ask me how to jack it up, aren't you? So let's uh, unclip this camera and I'll show you what I do. So I jack up under there, under that arm, and then once it's there, I put a jack stand right there, and I leave both of them in place, just for safety, because I don't want to get crushed, and this is a heavy car. All right, so wheel nuts. 21 mil. If your car still has this uh, little wheel cap handy, it's great for holding the nuts. Most of mine are broken. Get the wheel out of the way. Okay, so this is an easy job. All we have to do is remove these nuts here. Now the way you do that is you hit a bit of uh, penetrating oil here you wait for it to sink in, then you grab this top bit with a pair of vice grips so that the shock can't turn and you just loosen these nuts. Now the manual, if you have a Haynes manual, says that the bottom you should remove uh, these nuts here on either side, but they're really hard to get to and that's dumb, so you just remove, let's get a better angle on that, you just remove this nut here, it's a 17 mil. Hit that with um, some penetrating oil, and it's actually accessible by a large wrench and or an air gun, or an impact, uh, did, uh, electric impact wrench, battery powered impact wrench, so it just comes off. Once you've done that, it's as simple as just compressing the shock with your hands and pulling it out. Um, so uh, let's get these top nuts off. Let's give that time to sink in. All right, so let's get uh, this uh, top nut off. So what I like to do is I like to put my, uh, uh, you know, ratchet spanner, 14 mil, on top, and then get a nice pair of clamps on, big ones. Yeah, actually, that angle's all wrong, so I'm going to change the angle of that. See. see if that's a better angle. I don't want to actually press against the uh, brake there, so what I actually need to do is get these two closer together. Just stuff it up again. hasn't grabbed that top thing. I'll come back when this is done. As you can see, I've got a slight change of plans here. Couldn't get a good grip on that top flat up there, so I'm actually using a 14mm spanner behind the brake lines, so and I bend that on the bottom nut, pressing against the body, and I'm just using a 14mm on the top. There it goes. Obviously, the um, penetrating oil helped. There's a bit of, bit of rust on that thread. Right, so now we're going to need to actually grab that top flat, unfortunately. But hopefully, now that the lock nut's off, we won't have to be worrying about it too much. So, in terms of the torque required, let's use a smaller... Let's 
Let's see where we go. No, that's not too happy. It's got a nice better grip on that. Oh, that's actually quite tight. That might need some more penetrating oil, so I'll come back later. Alright, well, I've got it done, and I'm sorry I didn't video that, but I resorted to using heat, a uh, little propane torch to heat that nut up. Um, now that it's heated up, I can, it's come loose, and I can take... Oh yeah, that is tight. Like, I don't know if you can see how tight that is, but, I mean, I'm not strong, but I'm not piss weak either. And that does not want to come off. So we'll have to go slow on this. Well, this is a little embarrassing because the top of that shock, the flat, snapped off. <laughs> Basically, this little doodad here talked off. So now I've got a big ass pipe wrench on the on the uh, top of the shock and a long ring spanner, which I can get a This was working. It does work. I'll come back when it's done because I need more space than the camera allows. Might have actually have space to do this now. Like, good grip. I'm actually crushing the shock here which makes the shock a bit flatter. I really don't know why this nut's so tight. Hopefully it'll just actually torque off the entire thread. Because I'm replacing this. This is probably the original shock from 93. Oh. Anyway, when it's done, I'll be back. Well, it's off. The threads don't look destroyed. But that was a disaster. Hopefully, this guy down here doesn't fight as much as that one did. All right, let's see if we can get ourselves a spanner on this bad boy here. Yes, we can. And we have 17 mil on the good old impact gun. That's why I love impact guns. They are just the shiz. All right, now we can just uh, pop this bolt out. All right, let's go pull that bolt out. All right, that's the bolt. Now all we have to do is just compress the shock up and it'll just come out, it'll slide down then come out the top. I'm gonna do this with a camera getting in my way. Just compressing it by hand. And out she comes. Let's look at those threads. They don't look too bad. Luckily the new shock comes with a new nut. Anyway, let's drop the new shock in. Alright, this new shock is quite springy. So what we're going to do is pop it in and then we have to compress it by hand to get it back up to the top. That's all right, I didn't need that thing that fell out. That was part of the old shock. So, there we go. So let's put the bottom bolt in first. Down there. And if we need to lever it up, we can use a screwdriver between the bracket and the shock to get a little bit of altitude. See that? See the shot coming up? 
Ah. Now, if you need to, you can do it by hand, and I might actually do that because it gives me more control, but the camera is quite in the way, so. Okay, we got it in. Just a little bit of cussing. Alright. Now, the Haynes manual does not prescribe a torque value for this nut. It mentions 70 newton meters for the ones at the bottom. So I'm going to go similar to that for this one. But I will tighten that once I have the upper nut on. All right, that's done. Now we're just going to tighten up the bottom nut down here, and we're done. So I always start with just a basic socket. Put the spanner on the other side, holding it in place. And now. Uh, once we can talk that to 70, we're basically done. Put the wheel back on and it's over. Pretty easy job.